Hey everyone, we are on day one. It's still the 14th. We're still in week number four. And you are going to take out your history book, your green anthology, you know what that is. And you're turning to page 158. And then you're gonna have out practice page 26 ready too, okay? So if you want to go ahead and get those things ready, you can just pause me and then do that, okay? And then we'll catch up, okay? Get your bat. Alrighty, so the title of this chapter is Working Together Around the World, Lesson 5. And some of the things that we are going to find out what are some things nations do to get along with one another? We know that that's always uh, could be a problem. And the first check is nations depend on each other for many things. We're going to be reading about that. And nations find ways to get along. And our new vocabulary is treaty, ambassador, and embassy. Can you say that with me? Treaty ambassador and embassy and i drew some pictures to kind of give you a hint although you know i have a better poster at home at school that someone else drew but we'll just go along with this these are not the meanings of these words but we're going to see if we can find which of these definitions matches which of these words gave you some pretty big clues there with the uh, drawings okay so i'm going to turn around this way and let's go ahead and read together okay ready we're on page 158. nations have different cultures and different kinds of governments we've talked about that we're not all the same for many reasons however they need to get along with one another just like my dogs need to learn to get along with whatever's going on out there for example one country might grow food that another country does not have. The other country might make computers that the first country wants. So each can give the other nation what it wants. That could be called trade. Uh, nations can also help one another in times of trouble. I think we've talked about this before. When you send a good from your country to another country, that's called export. When another country sends something to us, it's called import, okay? And port is where the ships come in and where the things get unloaded. Okay, so look at the first little um, purple circle down there. It shows a large cargo ship sending food to another country. And if you follow the uh, little piece of yarn, it says what in the orange box? Can you read that? Good, nations work together to help one another. Then you can see the strings. We uh, go into other countries, we help teach children, we might provide uh, books and papers and educational resources. And then of course, as you know, with our compassion, uh, child, we uh, help supply um, their schooling, their education, their uniform, food, things like that. And then you see that we also uh, can export or give medicine to other countries. And if there's ever a national, a natural disaster, like an earthquake, a flood, um, even tornadoes and other hurricanes, that we will go in and help those countries. That particular fellow is wearing that red cross. That's the Red Cross. And that's a Christian organization as well as uh, we have other Christian organizations that go in and help countries. So, looking up on the top of page 159, what does that say? For example, one country might grow... Did we already read that? Yes, we did. Okay, it bears repeating. So, we help countries with supplying what they need, and they help us by supplying what we don't either grow or manufacture here. So, go to page 160, and this says... What's the title? sharing cultures and ideas. Mm -hmm. Nations share parts of their culture, such as their art, music, and writing with the rest of the world. Nations can also share ideas. Men and women of different countries work together to make new discoveries. Right now, uh, every night when my husband and I take our dogs on the walk, there's a bright light up in the sky, and it just fascinates me because I am looking at the International Space Station 
where we have uh, astronauts from many nations that are actually living there and doing research and scientific things together. And there they are, way out there. It's pretty interesting. And me down here, I could look up and see them. You see in the green circle, the International Space Station. You see in the red circle, a picture that was taken long ago. There's probably a whole different group up there now, astronauts from many nations. And then back in the bluish purple, you see dance from Africa. And then you see music from Mexico. And being that America is kind of a melting pot of many nations, we don't have to go very far to find Mexican food, African culture, things like that. And then uh, the fast fact says members and guests of the United Nations speak different languages. Each member needs to wear earphones to hear the words of other members in his or her own language. And we do that at church, even we have Spanish translation. People come to our church that can't, don't speak English as well, they could uh, wear earphones and hear the message being translated. Next page, now we begin to see some of these words. So, keeping the peace, we want peace. The opposite of peace is war, and that's no fun at all. So let's read that. Nations of the world do not always agree on things, just like family members don't always agree. Brothers and sisters, husbands and wives, we don't always agree on things. The best thing to do is talk about it. So they talk about their differences and try to reach agreements that are fair. They might write a treaty, and what does it say right after the comma? or a set of rules that nations agreed to follow. So what was the definition for treaty? A person who speaks for his or her government in another country, a set of rules nations agree to follow, or the building an ambassador lives in while he or she works in another country. What did it tell us a treaty is? A treaty is a set of rules that nations agree to follow. Very good, okay. It also mentions peace treaties keep countries around the world from going to war, which is a good thing. Ready? Sometimes nations use ambassadors. I don't know if that's, uh, it could be either one. Anyway, sometimes nations use ambassadors to help make agreements between their governments. Read that next part with me. An ambassador is a person who speaks and acts for his or her government in another country. So an ambassador is a person who speaks for his or her government in another country. We have male ambassadors, we have female ambassadors that go to other countries and represent America. The next section says he or she lives and works in an embassy there. That's my translation of an embassy. You actually have a photograph there. This is Embassy Row in Washington, D.C. So when we have ambassadors from other countries come to the United States, they will stay in, there might be the French embassy, they stay in that uh, as their home while they're living here and there they will find shelter and they should find safety while they're there So the embassy and we've got this right across here is The building an ambassador lives in while he or she works in another country The United States has ambassadors in embassies all over the world many nations have embassies right here in the United States Which is pretty cool and then up at the top in the orange box, you see world leaders meet to discuss problems. You see the leader of Italy shaking hands with the leader of something that ends with a Asia. And you see the leader of Israel saying, hey, that's rude. Why are you shaking hands across in front of him? Anyway, I don't know what he's thinking, but that does look a little uncomfortable. So there you have it. They get together and they share their ideas. And the summary says what? Nations of the world find ways to get along together. And normally that works. So go ahead and take your practice page out, page 26. We're going to do a little bit of a review. 
and see what you remember, what you learned, okay? So take that out and put your heading on it just so you don't get out of the practice of heading your papers and you don't forget what your number is. And the date, remember a treaty? A treaty is a set of rules nations agree to follow in order to get along with one another. An ambassador is the person who speaks for his or her government in another country. And the embassy is the building that the ambassador lives in while he or she works in that other country. Okay, you ready with your papers? This is called Nations Around the World. Circle yes if the uh, statement is true. Circle no if the statement is not true. Okay, number one, what does that say? Nations often work together to help one another. Yes or no? Go ahead and circle. Did you circle yes? Good, they do. Number two, all nations have the same kind of government. We're all the same. We all have a president, we all elect them in the same way. Is that right? No. Some nations have dictators, some have kings, so that would be a no. Number three, nations have different cultures. Are we all different all around the world? Yes, we are. And number four, all nations speak the same language. Well. I think we know that that is not true. And number five, a treaty is an agreement between nations. Is that what a treaty is? It is, it's an agreement between nations, okay? Yeah, and number six, an ambassador speaks for his or her nation. Yes, there he is a person who speaks for his or her government or nation country. And lastly, number seven, nation, nations share art and music with one another. Do we keep all of our great ideas to ourselves? No, we want to share it with the world, don't we? So that would definitely be a yes. So hang on to this. I believe on the back side will be page 27. That will do at a later time, okay? So that ends our history lesson for right now. And so you guys enjoy the rest of your day. And I will see you again tomorrow on Tuesday, okay? Have a great one. Bye-bye.